One of the reasons I love miniature war games is because anyone can create their own rules. You can find them on Kickstarter, Wargame Vault, or they may even have their own website. Since a lot of these are independently published, they don't get wide mass-produced printing runs and are distributed digitally as PDFs. There are many advantages to PDFs, but for me, I just don't like them. I can't seem to learn a game's rules unless I read them on paper. So for this episode, I'll be making my own printed rule books from the PDFs that I have been meaning to read, using some simple bookbinding techniques. I also want to mention that the tutorials from DOS Bookbinding here on YouTube were super helpful. Without them, I never would have figured this method out. It is a simple but long process, so strap in while I pull a Johannes Gutenberg and set to work like it's 1440. Okay, there are some things that we have to do first to make the PDF look like a book. The front and back printed pages will be folded over each other, so if we just hit print, the PDF would print each page in numerical sequence, and when they were folded up into a book, the pages would become out of order. To stop this from happening, the PDF needs to be reordered into what is known as signature printing. If we were making a book with four pages, the first and fourth pages are together, then the second and third would be on the other side. Because English is read left to right, the first page should be on the right side of the paper, and the last page is on the left, since the middle is our margin. An easy way to know how to format this is by making a small book that will be as many pages as you need, and writing the page number down. You can then open this tiny book up, and it will have the layout for each page. I'll be starting simple by making a zine-style book. I'll be using Casey Garsky's Space Weirdos. Space Weirdos is a fantastic sci-fi skirmish game that uses a bunch of different dice to streamline the action. A lot of YouTubers and people on the internet have talked about it. I'd recommend watching one of their videos for more information. I start by opening the PDF in Photoshop. Then in the importer on the left, you select the pages you want to open, so all of them. Then here on the right, you want to make sure that the images are 8.5 inches high and 5.5 inches wide, so they fit on the 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Clicking OK opens the pages individually. I'm going to go ahead and make a new document to house all these pages. That is 8.5 inches high by 11 inches wide. I then grab the first page and place it on the right, and the last page and place it on the left. I continue this process with all the pages using my number book as a guide, and the entire process is helped if you add in this center line. Because I added the solo mode, the page numbers had to be changed slightly. Then each page is saved as a JPEG and named after its printing order. Once all my JPEGs are together, they are opened again in Photoshop. These should be the only files you have open, so you can click File Automate PDF Presentation. Then this window will show up to show the files that will be in this new PDF, and clicking this will make sure that it's in numerical order. This new PDF can be printed out for the zine. I'm using Photoshop because it's what I have, but there's plenty of free photo editing software out there that you can use, like GIMP Studios or Gravit. I believe you can do this in Acrobat, but I don't trust it. I wanted to do it myself. Here are the printed pages. I'm going to carefully line up the corners of each page and fold them over. You always want the smallest number to be on the top left part of the paper. When all the pages are folded in half, they can be placed inside of each other and checked to make sure they're in the correct order. Now the paper needs to be binded together, and we will be doing this by stapling the spine. Using my X-Acto blade, I cut two staples from the sleeve inside the stapler. Then with the pin, I poke a hole in the margin line in the center of the page. The pin can be forced through the sheets of paper by lifting the bottom of the stack. The staple is held up to this hole and used to measure the distance for the next one. With both holes made, the staple is pushed through and folded closed on the other side. Once you do the same on the other side, you will have completed a zine-style rulebook. But what happens when your rules are longer than 20 pages? Space Weirdos was basically a single signature book, so to make a longer book, we need to make more signatures. Signatures shouldn't be more than four sheets of paper. To be safe, I'm doing three sheets of paper signatures, which would give me about 12 pages of rules. The set of rules I'll be working with is In Country by Enemy Spotted Studios. This is a modern warfare style war game made and owned by veterans. I'm excited to learn these rules and plan on a dedicated video in the future. But if you want to learn more, you can go to their website and get the rules or look at their awesome miniature range. Looking through the In Country rules, there were a few pages I felt could be cut out, like the inside cover image and the special thanks. Sorry, ass mag. I was able to get the page count down to 48, so that's four editions. Something that helps when working with this many pages 
is renaming the PDF to something short. The smaller the tabs, the easier it will be to work with. Unlike Space Weirdos, these rules are in color. We'll be printing in black and white, and I know something like this will look terrible in grayscale. So I take a page that has a lot going on and create a series of adjustments that will be used on the entire project. First using curves, I click the white value selector, then select this light green background, changing it to white. This will make everything much easier to read. Then I go to the hue and saturation and bring the saturation all the way down, making the leftover green a dark gray. And finally, for the illustrations, I increase the contrast to make them more stylized and graphic. Now look at the difference between the basic grayscale and the new adjustment. I think it looks a lot better. Because I deleted some of the pages, the numbering was off and each page had to be renumbered, along with the table of contents. The book was assembled the same way as Space Weirdos, but in 12 page increments. So pages 1 through 12 were saved as its own PDF, then the same for 13 through 24, 25 through 36, and 37 through 48. I also had to create this inside cover, which is also known as an end paper. They'll be used in the binding process. This topography image was turned black and white and made slightly longer than the pages inside the book. I'm not exactly sure how much bigger it needs to be yet, so I made some lines in 5mm increments. The signatures and end papers are printed out and carefully folded in half. The folded signatures are lined up and checked to make sure they are all in order. Then I press them between some masonite with C-clamps to get a strong crease in the paper. I would leave them clamped like this for at least 24 hours. After they are pressed, the signatures will be nice and flat, and the inside cover can be attached. I use 5mm of overlay for the end papers, switching to a dull exacto blade the center line was scored and folded. The fold works as a hook that will be bound together with the signatures and allow the cover to be attached later. Next, using a piece of cardstock, a segment is cut off. This will work as a straight edge and help with measuring the locations for binding holes. In total, six binding holes are needed. The first two are half an inch from the ends, and two holes will be half an inch apart, about two inches from the center point of the pages. The addition is opened up and placed over the straight edge. Then using a pin, holes are poked at the six locations marked on the straight edge. To bind the pages together, I use some waxed linen cord that is commonly used in jewelry making. The cord was slightly wider than the holes I made with the pin, so my needle tool was needed to enlarge them. Now the cord could be threaded through a needle. Any second now. And instead of tying it, the cord is just folded and twisted into itself. Binding the book will require entering from the spine on the bottom hole, then coming out through the pages on the second hole weaving in and out until finally exiting out of the top hole in the spine. I pull the needle all the way through the first hole and leave about an inch of cord behind. Then carefully push the needle through the second hole. Remember you're working with paper and that can rip and tear pretty easily. Since this is the first signature, the three folded pages and the end papers are being threaded together. As I get towards the end, I want to make sure that there isn't any slack in the cording. Having reached the last hole, the cord is pulled out and the second signature is placed on top. The needle then passes through the matching hole of the signature below it. And the process continues as the cord weaves through the pages until it reaches the end of the holes. To add extra strength, the cord can be looped around the previous signature. This is called French sewing and it creates a stronger bond at the center binds. You just need to make sure the cord passes under the previous before being woven through the next hole. Having reached the end of the second signature, spare cordage from the beginning is tied to what was just pulled out of the book. Make sure there isn't any slack before tying these lines together. Then add the third signature 
and continue the process. This all might seem like a lot, and at this point I'm kind of getting tired of talking, but the process gets easier as you continue. You just need to make sure you don't pull too hard, that you tear the paper, you don't leave any slack in the cord, and if you are doing the French sewing method, that you pass under the previous line of the center bindings. The only new thing you have to do when attaching your third signature is at the end, you loop the needle underneath the loop of the first and second signatures to tighten them down. Then you can move on to the next one. The fourth signature is also my final, so I make sure that the second end paper is also attached. Once I reach the end of the holes, the needle passes through the loop of the third edition below it and is tied off. We now have the majority of the book done. I was pretty thorough with making sure I didn't leave any slack, but there was still one spot where the binding cord could have been tighter. It's not that big of a deal and it will be fixed later. The actual hard covers of the book will be chipboard. You can buy it in sheets of different thicknesses, but I'm using a 0.05 inch, which I think is like 1.5 millimeter. These covers were cut to be the same size as the pages, but a quarter of an inch narrower to give the book a spine. The pages in both covers are then clamped together with the C-clamps and masonite. The spine will be glued together with white PVA glue. I'm very liberal with this and spread it out with my finger and try to tack down the cord lines as well. The glue helps tighten the spine and keeps the pages together. When I was done, I let everything sit and dry for about an hour. Now the chipboard gets glued to the end papers. Earlier I drew a line about 2 eighths of an inch from the spine of the paper. The chipboard will be lined up with that mark. You need to leave a little bit of room to allow the book to bend and open. Slightly watered down PVA glue is spread out over the end paper. There is a piece of wax paper behind it to protect the pages. The chipboard gets pressed down and the same is done on the other side. This book is then set under some weight and left to dry for 15 minutes. While the glue was drying, I created the image that will be placed over the chipboard covers. The cover images were printed slightly bigger than the 8.5 by 11 size, with about 10 millimeters on each side. This will be folded over and attached to the inside cover. The corners were cut at an angle so they don't overlap, and the edge that will face the outside of the cover was scored. I created the spine of the book using brown craft paper tape. This tape has an exterior that can be painted and that glue can stick to. The adhesive is activated by water, which is brushed on, and the tape is attached to the spine of the book. I ran the wet brush over the tape one more time to make sure it would stay down. The entire book was pressed under weight for 15 minutes until the water dried to keep it from warping. After the weight, I measured how much of the tape I wanted to be visible on the spine and matched it to the cover image. I also cleaned up any overhanging from the end papers so it doesn't interfere. Then once more some watered down PVA is brushed onto the chipboard and the cover image is placed down using the crease as a straight edge. The flaps of the cover image are glued down on top of the end paper. Everything is left under some weight for a few hours until finally you have your finished book. I kind of wish the spine was black. The tape is paintable. Okay, hang on a second. And there it is, one 48-page hardcover book, printed for less than $10 and bound with things I had lying around my hobby zone. It looks and feels like a book, but what if we wanted some colored pictures? The last set of rules I'll be working with are from GCT Studios' Bushido Risen Sun, a small skirmish game of feudal warriors and monsters from Japanese folklore. The rules are free to download from their website, so I spent a little bit more on printing. First thing I noticed were the pages were all different widths, so I had to expand to an 8.5 by 14 paper when formatting the signatures. There were also some pages that were just blank, and I wanted to fill them with artwork. Bushido being about feudal Japan, I knew I wanted to use some traditional woodcut prints. Art museum websites are a great source, and since these books are personal use and I won't be selling them, I don't have to worry about copyright laws. I found this awesome print from 1844 that felt like it captured the theme of Bushido pretty well. On the RISD Museum website, there was even a direct download link. 
the image was resized and added in with all the other cool artwork I found. Now I save each signature as a PDF, like I did with In Country, while making a signature for just the pages that will be printed in color. As long as the page layout stayed the same, it didn't matter that I wasn't printing the rest of the book in color. After I had everything printed, the black and white pages could be swapped out with the color ones. The book was bound the same exact way as before, and I designed my own cover and back cover with images I found online. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how these came out. They actually look and feel like books. The process is forgiving and you will only get better the more you practice. And you should experiment. Try printing on larger sized paper or try different styles of binding. Look, I made this big version of Space Weirdos by printing on 11 by 17 inch paper. Making these books is inexpensive and will get faster with each one you make. In Country ended up costing the most, but that's only because the PDF rules were $10. I do want to point out that I paid for all of these, except Bushido, which was free. There are some places on the internet where one could hypothetically find pirated PDFs, but these are small businesses and you should pay and support them. Unless they are a multi-billion dollar company that has been exploiting their fan base for years, then go for it. I don't care about them. Fuck them.